Welcome to the Dungeons and Dragons basic series here on my channel. Uh, this will be the second edition of the Dungeons and Dragons basic series. And in this issue, I was looking at the player's handbook in the beginning, and it talks about the three pillars of adventure. You have exploration, social interaction, and combat. And all three pose different types of encounters that your, your players can come across. So the one that I'm going to talk about today is one that I feel is the most important aspect to any tabletop role playing game. And that is combat. Now the reason I think it's the most important part is because when you're looking at a game system most people talk about the mechanics of combat. This is going to be a very basic video that covers the types of actions you can do and how they work. It's not going to go into the specifics of what different classes and different races can do. All right, when combat starts, everybody at the table rolls initiative. Now, initiative is a d20 roll, which we have spoke about in a previous video, and it's your dex modifier on top of that. That is your initiative bonus. So, say for instance you have a dex modifier of a plus two and you roll a 16 on your d20. That means your initiative would be 18. Now, if two people or the DM and a player have the same initiative, the book says it's up to the dungeon master to decide how to move forward with that. Ultimately, if there's a tie, it's up to the dungeon master. Just remember that, guys. Much like with anything in Dungeons and Dragons, if your dungeon master tells you you're doing it a certain way, listen to them. It's, it's up to them, really. And they're not trying to pick favorites or anything like that. They're trying to portray the game the way they want to. It's a collaborative storytelling element, and they're just the ones that are trying to keep it flowing. So, Now, with that said, once you've determined initiative, and it's your turn, there's three things you can do. You have a move action, an action, and a bonus action. Okay, Starting with movement. Movement is standing up from prone, it's climbing, swimming, crawling, it would be maybe dropping to prone, and it's your movement speed, so you can move up to so many feet, okay? Most characters, it's 30 feet, some it's a little less, some it's a little higher, it just depends. But you'll know by looking at your sheet, looking at your speed uh, at the top, that's how far you can move as a movement action, okay? Then you have your actions. And there's a lot of different things you can do as your actions. You can attack up close, so if you're within five feet or 10 feet of your enemy, depending on what weapon you have, you can attack. That's, once again, a d20 roll, and your aim is to go, to roll higher your goal is to roll higher than their armor class using your bonuses to attack. Now your bonuses to attack will be dependent on various things. What weapon you're using, if you're proficient, if it's, if it's a strength based bonus, or a dex based bonus. So we'll go more into detail on the types of bonuses for weapons in a future video. But for now, let's stick to what you can do. The next type of thing you can do is a ranged attack. So if you're far away from your enemy, more than 5 or 10 feet, then you'll probably want to do a ranged attack, whether that's sling a spell at them, shoot an arrow, throw a dart, throw a dagger, throw a hand axe, something along those lines. Ranged attacks are usually based on your dex modifier. If you're throwing a weapon, you could also use your strength modifier instead. Um, when you've delivered the final blow to your enemy and they drop to zero hit points, you can determine if you want that to be lethal damage or non-lethal damage. Uh, if it's non-lethal damage, you're knocking them out. If it's lethal damage, you're basically going for the kill shot. Reasons you might do this is maybe you want to keep someone alive. Maybe you're instructed to keep this person alive so they can serve time in prison. Various reasons why you might want to knock a creature out as opposed to kill it. Uh, the next thing is casting a spell. You can cast a spell if, if your player is able to do that, your character is able to do that. They might be a wizard, they might be a high elf, um, they might have a feat that allows them to cast spells. 
but casting a spell is one of the actions you can do as well. And there's different ways to do a spell. There's um, a spell that is a ranged attack, which then gets your spell casting ability as a bonus. And there are area of effect spells and things along uh, those lines where the enemies or anybody in the area needs to make a DC check to whatever the saving throw would be. So um, that's something to keep in mind too. Uh, another thing you can do as your action is a dash. Now what a dash is, is it's another movement. So you have your movement from before, well now you can do it again to basically it's like sprinting. So now instead of just walking your distance, now you're sprinting your distance. A dash takes the takes up the action slot, so you wouldn't be able to do an attack if you've done a dash or anything like that, unless you have a bonus action, but we'll get to that here in a second. Uh, another thing you can do is disengage. So say you and another party member are engaged with a monster, and you're hurting really bad, you're down to within three, two or three hit points, and if you stay here and try to go a whole other round, you might die. Well, it might be beneficial for you to disengage from that enemy. And what that does is it moves you out of range. It does take up at least some of your movement. So when you do this, you need to have movement left. Um, so you'll disengage and then you can move away. Um, so basically that first step is five feet and then the rest of your movement, obviously. Um, the next thing that you can do is dodge. Now the way dodge works is if you can see an enemy and you declare dodge as your action, then you get advantage on any dex check and your enemy gets disadvantage on any attack against you. So you could do this instead of your disengage action. Say you're down to three hit points, you have a very high dex, and so it might make sense that, hey, I'm going to do dodge. Now, if they attack me, they're at disadvantage. And if I have to make a dex saving throw for whatever reason, maybe it's a spell that might be cast on you or something along those lines, I have a good chance that it's not going to affect me because I have a high dex modifier. Um, so, so that would be dodge. A very good ability. Um, you, again, need to have movement to do this. Otherwise, you can't do it. Another action you can do is help. Now you're probably asking, well, what's help? Help would be if me and another character are engaged with the monster, and maybe I don't have a good chance of hitting this. Maybe I'm a wizard, I don't have a good weapon, and my attacking with my hand-to-hand -hand weapon is very bad, very poor. So maybe I say, I want to help the fighter who's engaged with him. Well, what that is, is you're distracting the monster, ultimately, and now the other character, when they go to hit the next turn, or the next time they're up, they get advantage on their attack. So you're basically upping the chances that your other character is going to be able to hit them. Very helpful. Obviously that's why it's called help. Uh, the next action is hide. So anybody can hide, okay? Some characters are able to hide uh, behind other players, or other characters such as halflings. Um, but ultimately, if you're gonna hide, they can't have a line of sight on you. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So if combat started around the corner between some of your players, you can choose to hide somewhere, okay? Now the way hiding works is the stealth or a dex check. Um, and if you succeed, you know, there are various benefits to it. For instance, if a character or an enemy can't see you, which it would be based on his passive wisdom, uh, passive perception, if he can't see you and he's trying to attack you without seeing you, he's at disadvantage. If you try to attack him and he can't see you, you're at advantage. So those are some, some key things. So maybe you're hiding in a tree. Well, he comes near you, his passive perception isn't higher than your, your, your stealth check, you can attack him at advantage. Now, the thing is, once you attack him, you give away your position and you're not hiding anymore. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, the, the basics of that. Now, the next thing to keep in mind in combat is cover. 
So as part of your movement action, maybe you run to get cover. Now you're not hiding, you're still there, you're still seen. You just go behind some crates, okay? And kind of slouch down a little bit so you have three quarters cover. Well, here's how cover works. Half cover is a plus two bonus to your armor class. Three quarters cover is a plus five bonus to your armor class. And total cover is, like we had said before, they have disadvantage to hit. Now, it's up to the DM to say if it's even possible if you have full cover to be hit. So, you know, if you're around a corner, they're probably not going to be able to hit you. They can't shoot something up over top on you, um, you know, depending on what the corner is. If it's a house, you might have something protecting you from overhead as well. So that might not be a possibility. Um, something that might work would be an area of effect spell. You know, they don't necessarily know how far around the corner you are, but they might be able to do an area of effect spell. So, anyways, long story short, they have disadvantage to hit, but ultimately it's up to the DM in that situation. Now, the next thing for uh, to that you could possibly do is a bonus action. Now, right off the top, um, starting at first level, not everybody has a bonus action. Some character classes do. For example, a fighter can do a second wind as a bonus action. A barbarian can go into rage as a bonus action. Ultimately, you'll know if you have a bonus action because it'll be a certain ability or feat or th something you've gained throughout the game that gives you a bonus action. So that'll be more better explained in a future video. Until then, you know, just know that there's an, a, an option for it. Um, but if it's not on your character sheet that you can do something as a bonus action, then you probably don't have one. That's the long story short. So that was D&D Basics about combat. I hope you found this informative. And you know, in the future, we're going to get more specific with these. This is something that I've put a lot of thought into, and I'm slowly going to continue to build onto the material in these videos. Now, hopefully this is something you can share with new players that maybe either haven't played D&D &D yet, or uh, will maybe people are on the fence about playing D&D &D and they want to see how it works. This video is for them. So I know there's a lot of new people out there just jumping into D&D &D who have told me that you know they've been looking for a video series like this. So um, here I am giving it to you. If there's anything in particular that you've noticed that is confusing to you, let me know. In the next video, I will probably dive a little deeper into combat. I want your feedback. I want to know what you find most helpful about this series and where you guys want to see it go. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you'll tune in again next time. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. Um, I'm around 500 subscribers right now. Uh, very proud of that number. So please subscribe. Please be sure to like and comment this video if you found it any bit useful. Or maybe it's not necessarily useful for you, but you know it's useful for somebody else. Please like and subscribe, to, or like and comment to this. And once again, please share my video. If you have a tabletop group um, that maybe they don't watch YouTube videos, or they're not very active in these communities, please share this with them. I'd greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.